Hi guys. Um, I want to show you a really cool thing you can do with the new Behringer X32 console uh, to get super fat bass drum sound. Um, everything that I sh will show you is, is done inside the console. So no outboard needed or something. Uh, and by the way, this is a completely uh, blank scene. So everything on reset and basically, so you see every step taken that is uh, necessary to achieve this. So for example, uh, as usual on the first channel, I have my, my kick drum. Uh, let, let me dial it in real quick. Something like that should work for now. Um, so now we have our basic kick channel as usual. Let me put it down a bit. By the way, sorry for the uh, gruesome uh, camera work I've I'm doing here. Just it's just an iPhone. Um, yeah. So uh, we have set up our bass drum. Now uh, what we can do is go to the talkback section and press the view button. And what we now have on the uh, right side of, uh, of the tab is this thing called the oscillator. Oscillator, sorry. Um, so what you can do with it is like you can generate pink noise or a sine wave. And um, I always wondered what, what uh, you could make of use uh, of it because uh, you can, of course, you can use it maybe when you're setting up the PA uh, to I don't know, put some pink noise to the PA and tune the system and something like that. But uh, once the show is running, there is uh, really not that much use of it uh, for it, in my opinion, until now. Because uh, I'm going to show you. Um, what we do now is we uh, take some unused bus. For example, uh, yeah, 128 with ARIA monitors. 9 to 16 are first four are blank, then comes the effects, blah blah. So you take a, a unused bus, for example, bus 10. Put it up. Um, so what we will now do is route the oscillator to bus 10. And generate a sine wave. For example, 50 hertz. And hit the generate button. Put it to some usable level, like uh, like that. Yeah. So what we now have is sine wave on bus 10, 50 hertz. Uh, so make sure to not plug in any monitors into that. Um, and wh what we can do now is, w for example, we go we go to channel two and route back the created bus 10 to that. So we have 50 hertz on channel 2. So the config and then just select as source the bus. Like that. So now we have a 50 hertz sine wave on channel 2. Awesome. So uh, now we stay on that channel, select the gate, put it active, and now comes the clue. Uh, what we can do with the console is we can select different key input source for an external signal to open the gate, and guess what? We take channel 1, or kick channel. Now we dial in the gate to so that it, that it opens nicely with the kick drum. Something like that. By the way, uh, <coughs> to make it 
sound not so picky. Uh, you can put up the attack a bit to get kind of a smoother curve. So, and now, what we have now, we, we, we put up a bass drum channel. Now the second fader, now it's like it's like the meat fader. Yeah. So, we can use this to fatten up bass drum sounds. As you can hear, it's just a nicely, perfectly tuned sine wave. And for, uh, in my opinion, that there's so much use for it because uh, if you think uh, about the different situations you you run into, you like you're in a boomy room, <coughs> and the kick drum sounds like shit. And <coughs> one thing you can do is uh, you just take the the kick channel, and uh, and like get rid of all the low end because it sounds like shit. So make it like a really kicky just for the kick information and then you can gate it like hell like that and then you just can can create artificial la uh, low end on your own so um that's for example if you if the the bass drum is tuned really badly. You can you can always save it. You can design the decay perfectly, and uh, yeah, and what you have is, is a perfect sine wave. So that that's something Subwoofer really likes, uh, and you can even tune the the frequency to some frequency, like from 40 to I don't know 80 hertz. That uh, that really comes good in the room uh, through the PA and. Yeah, that is really suitable for for the situation you're in. You can really tune tune the frequency to the room to something that the subwoofer likes and that gets you gets you where you want to go. And uh, even if you have a have a, a nicely uh, tuned bass drum, you can just uh, put in some 40 hertz extension in it, and yeah, that's great. You can really make everybody's stomach hurt with that, and that's of course our purpose as a sound engineer. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I hope you like this uh, this tip. And uh, yeah, uh, again, sorry for for my bad camera work. Uh, another thing, of course, you can that was it's just uh, it was just an example. Of course, you can make it sound uh, a lot better than I did in this uh, small demo thing. Just play around with it. Uh, what you can even do is uh, make the same thing with the snare. Just put in some. 200 hertz uh, on the snare or something, or, or maybe 170 or something, can really uh, fatten up uh, drum sounds with it. Or for example, put in white noise on the snare, like in the 80s. <laughs> There's really, uh, really great use of it. Thanks.